the chat just to make sure that I'm really live and that you can hear me. So um, before we start, y'all can see I'm back with the legend, Professor Griff. Um, before I start, somebody in the chat, let me know you can hear me. We're actually backstage at the Ashwa Quasi Lecture in um, Stone Mountain. Him and uh, the brother Red Pill opened up for him. And I bumped into my brother, Professor Griff. So I said, Griff, Griff, the last video me and Griff did, we, um, you know, he had a message to DJ Academics. And I think that a lot of brothers and sisters, peace, that's okay. Yeah, let me know. Uh, tell, let me know if y'all can hear me good. I just want to make sure before we get started. Peace to everybody in the chat. I see y'all coming in. We hear you. Okay, great. So, um, you know, a lot of brothers and sisters in the industry get caught up in the politics of the industry. It's a tough place to exist in. It's a tough place to not lose your soul in. You know, we all say what we would do, what we wouldn't do. But we really don't, a lot of us really don't know what we would do if we got offered a $5 million check, $10 million check, $20 million check. Money changes people or it amplifies who they already are. Um, we've seen our brother Michael Jackson go through a lot. We've seen so many people go through a lot in the industry. And I think the purpose of this video, uh, Griff could have a, has a great um, understanding of the industry. Uh, he's coming at it from a place of love, not hate. And um, I see, uh, my, uh, Professor Griff, I see what our brother Kanye West is going through. He looked like... You know, sometimes he's saying some deep shit and he's profound. And sometimes you're like, what's wrong with dude? So I don't know what's going on with the brother's mental health. I know the brother is uh, on point with a lot of things he says. Some things I totally don't understand. I've heard recently the brother Ray J wants to commit suicide. And I'm constantly hearing about people in the industry suffering from depression, regardless of how much money they have, which we all think is everything. Griff, I want you to talk to what message would you give to Kanye? <clears throat> Ray J, everybody, all the other brothers and sisters in the industry who are trying to survive, trying to feed their family, pursuing a, uh, um, something that they love. We're musicians at heart because we're black. We're soul people. Uh, I need you to talk to them. I know some of them, some of them going to hear it. And if they don't hear it, somebody they know is going to hear this message. The last video we did with you and So Late, man, it went viral. People was loving it. So uh, talk to me about what I just uh, introduced right there, Professor Griff. Greetings, family. I think the I, the mere fact that you are brave enough to even step up to the plate on the, uh, the the platform that you are that you own to have this conversation um, is revolutionary. A lot of, when I say revolutionary, a lot of people will have the conversation in an environment that's controlled, scripted. So there's certain things that you can't say. The mere fact that you said a few seconds ago that we're soul people, mm. a lot of people have to look into that. Every aspect of what we did connected back to the soul. Even so, they started calling the food that we ate soul food. You understand what I'm saying? So it connected back to the soul. So what is it about the soul that we're not connected back to the soul that's causing the mental health? The food that we ate grounded us. Because mama, my dear... Grandma, mm -hmm. my nature, put our hands in the dirt in the garden and brought it into the kitchen to prepare those meals. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We no longer have that. Mm -hmm. The food is no longer connecting to the aspects of the body that it needs to connect to to nourish. Mm -hmm. So we're not centered. Mm -hmm. We're not centered on a nutrient level. We're not centered on a spiritual level because we're worshiping gods that don't look like us. We're not connected um, back to the soul simply because the vibration and the spirit of the music is not connecting with us anymore because now it's in, it's in a digital format as opposed to an analog format. So everything that we've kind of used to do and interact with and resonate with, we're losing touch with the soul. Mm -hmm. So when you look at someone like Kanye West, and you'll see him, like, like you said a few minutes ago, he'll say something very profound, very deep, make you scratch your head and think like, wow. And then you, you end up hearing some stuff from him like, wait a minute, where did that come from? But you see, that is the clinical definition of what being bipolar is, though. Bipolar extremes. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Going from one extreme to the next. And this is what you're seeing simply because staying, trying to stay relevant in a world that was made without a thought of you in it. Mm. Let me clarify that. Mm. Talk to him, brother. So this world was made and they did have you in mind. We just walked out of a lecture. A lecture's going on right now, and he's talking about the African origin of Freemasonry, the African origin of Christianity, the African origin, everything that made this world up that we live in. But when we interact with these things, we don't think that that came from us. The music that we put out came from us. All right? The whole idea of um, coming from a very centered health consciousness. That whole idea in, in that field and in that realm, that came from us. We was mastered at pulling from the earth nutrients and things that would heal us to keep us on the planet for a thousand years. What happened now that we're dying at 40? If you look in, this, in the scripture, we were living to be eight, nine, a thousand years old with no problem, bro. And then here we are checking out at 40, 50 60 years old. Here we are flip-flopping, losing our mind, man, at, at, at 35 years old. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Because we're not centered and we're no longer grounded. What were your thoughts on uh, the whole White Lives Matter uh, shirt? Do you think that, you know, what we've been through in this country is nothing to play with? Um, it's not a joke. Is something that shouldn't be used as a trolling technique. Do you think that um, there's any rationale that a person could use, uh, a black entertainer at that, whose father was a Black Panther, do you feel as though you could wear that and justify it and still get love from your people? Or do you think there's certain moves that our entertainers make where as a people and as an audience, we need to cut them off? That, 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 that's a very deep, intricate question. The idea of us being able to move who and what we are forward at the same time moving forward, having to reclaim that was, that was the, those things that were taken from us is a very difficult task. Um, we look to make and have allies in and outside of these systems when I say systems, the nine areas of people activity that Dr. Francis Cress Wilson gave us. We're looking to have allies. And sometimes we reach for allies across the fence, across the railroad tracks. Do you understand what I'm saying? I think coming from the perspective of understanding and witnessing mental health crisis and issues, I think individuals like Kanye West look to further his self, his business, his brand, but it's steeped in self-aggrandizement, meaning he wants to basically be something so much. But in that being something so much, he feels certain things that he needs to do in order to be in the bosom of his open enemy. He feels he has to disrespect black people. He feels he has to say these kind of things to quote unquote stay relevant. Now, if you damn near a billionaire, and you got to pull off antics like wearing a White Lives Matter shirt just to keep people's attention and stay relevant. There's a problem with that, bro. If you got three and four deals with three and four uh, fashion companies and shoe, shoe companies and clothing lines and that kind of thing, and you still need to do that to stay relevant, it's a problem. What signal are you sending to young brothers that's coming up looking at you and say, okay, I want to be the next Kanye West? I want to be the next fashion designer. I want to be the next one to make a um, a Yeezy sneaker or whatever. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're sending the signal to them. The only way you could do that is by selling your people out. That kind of energy and those kind of individuals and that kind of thing, our people, we could do, we could do without. We, we could do without that. You understand what I'm saying? So when I first saw it, I wasn't surprised because of who was wearing it and who was doing it. You walking arm in arm with Candace Owens, a known coon. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I don't think I was surprised. I was saying to myself, what is this for? Now, let me give you the Professor Griff method on how I view things sometimes. Y'all already know sometimes I listen to things with the sound down. 
It gives you a whole different perspective. You can watch someone's body language and tell whether or not they mean something. And sometimes I wait till the, the everything dies down. Then I look at things from in reverse. I look at things at the end result, then I'll move it backwards. All right. You're able to tell a lot from that. What is the end result of white lives matter? Let's look at it. Have white lives always mattered? Yes. Even when no other lives mattered. For example, everywhere you go on the planet, white people have made it so that the English language and the dollar bill is the standard. Do you understand what I'm saying? So now, if you are centered in who you are, right, with your own language, your own currency, your own thinking, your own way of eating, your own way of healing yourself, your own way of spirituality, your own way of praying, your your own way. In order for you to operate in the world that they've created now, all right, using your ancient wisdom and your ancient knowledge and spirituality and spiritual concepts, all right, in order for you to operate in this world, they make it so that you have to bow down to them. I could say to Brother Rich right now, Brother Father Rich, I got a deep love for you, man. And he may take that to heart. You understand what I'm saying? But the English language, as I often uh, explain, the English language won't allow me to convey the depths of that particular love to this brother without somebody looking at me like I'm gay. You understand what I'm saying? So the language twists the whole idea and concept of spirituality around. Caught up in the language, caught up into the mindset and the spirit of what this world forces us to do. You'll have a person like Kanye West, who a lot of people, and, and, and they have argued with me, they say, well, he's a genius. Well, like, well, how is he a genius? Let's define the word genius, and then let's see if that fits him. Do you understand what I'm saying? But let's not fi- define genius in the terms of a Eurocentric paradigm. Mm-hmm. Let's look outside of the, uh, the, the bastard English language. Let's define what a genius, for example. M. Hotep was a genius. He was responsible for building and constructing pyramids is Kanye that genius <laughs> come on talk to me no there's a sister that they discovered brother rich that just came up with a formula to cure cancer is he that genius Dr. Sabi was curing all kinds of diseases is Kanye West that genius what kind of genius is he you mean to tell me you took a drum machine and constructed some beats with some samples for some music that people already made but because you were able to do that and come up with a couple of hit songs, you're a genius. Well, if you're a genius, then what does that say about the bomb squad that constructed the public enemy songs? And we move the minds of the masses of the people on the planet. Do you understand what I'm saying? So Kanye West, when you start to break down and you end up in the hospital, you end up with bipolar kind of symptoms and a disorder. You end up, um, you end up saying some, saying and doing some things that'll take you. Um, from your center, and we start to look at you kind of sideways, then you might have to get recented. You might have to get reset. You might have to press the reset button, bro. Do you think it's possible um, to, you know, we they just had the the BET Awards, and I uh, got criticized, you know, for the the same thing it always gets criticized for the, you know. Um, we recently see what's going on with everybody in hip hop complaining about, you know, um, record label contracts, the same old, same old. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's possible moving forward for us to continue to support this industry and these record labels and maintain our sanity? Are we able to, I guess, exist in both worlds at the same time, be uh, in, the, in the industry per se and also be... Um, still have our, our soul intact do you think that's possible or do you think you have to completely step out of the industry uh to keep your soul intact and the reason why i asked that is recently they talked about ray j talking about he wanted to commit suicide and like when i in the beginning when i started i told you all the mental things all the brothers and sisters went through so uh talk to me is it possible to be in the industry and maintain your sanity your health your well-being your spirit and your soul from the examples that I'm about to give you, it would almost sound like A, I'm being hypocritical, B, I'm being contradictory, um, and I'm not. Um, my wife stepped away from the music industry after getting a seven-figure deal, like a seven-album deal. You understand what I'm saying? 
And at that particular time, you know, we was friends and I'm on the phone with her. And I said, sis, break them numbers down. Seven albums into a million dollars. Seven into a million is what? You're only going to get 180, 190,000 per out. That's not a lot of money when they want you to operate in the world that they want you to operate in. Trying to mold and shape her into the, you know, into the next um, sex goddess in the music industry. Do you understand what I'm saying? But her being the woman that she is, peeped it, saw it, looked down the road, saw that there wasn't a future in that, stepped it away. And the the ex-mayor of Atlanta, Kasim Reed, was her lawyer. And he negotiated the contract to get her in it. And uh, Kasim Reed stepped up to the plate and negotiated her contract out of it with, with her owing them people nothing. Absolutely. Zero. So she stepped out of it. What is it that Soleil saw in the music industry that she didn't see was good for her well-being, her health, and her family's health? Do you understand what I'm saying? We have to be able... To look into our lives and then use other people's lives as an example. All of the people that we can name, all of the people that when we go to the club, we dance to their music. You ever say, well, what happened to those individuals? What happened to Don Cornelius that every Saturday we used to watch Soul Train? What happened to, what happened to Don? What happened to James Brown, man, that every rap song you hear, you hear a James Brown sample? What happened to James Brown? What happened to Michael Jackson? That any day of the week you can hear a Michael Jackson song, regardless of where you at on the planet. What happened to these, to these particular individuals? Do you understand what I'm saying? And none of these particular individuals sold their soul. Like some of the artists that are doing right now as we speak. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of these individuals invited us back to the soul. Do you understand? And was responsible for the soul. So this whole idea of staying sane in a music industry... That thrives off of and is built off of the theft of African consciousness and the theft of black music and black spirituality is very hard to do because the very main thing in the music is, industry is to co-opt your soul and sell and, and pull from your soul to you depleted. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then you start listen. Why does the music sell everything but the music? Ooh, say that again. What you say? Why does the music? Sell everything but the music. <laughs> it seems like the music don't sell, but the music sells everything else. Because we've been used. Our voices, our spirit, our energy, our resources have been used to put a spirit and vibration out there that will get people's attention to the point where they can sell any product. And do we benefit from that? No. We don't. We, we truly don't benefit from that. You know why? Because every product that's sold... It, it depletes your soul. And your soul gets dried up to the point where, and then when they're tired of you, um, and your soul gets dried up, and they can't pull from your soul, your soul for resources anymore, they get rid of you, and they put the next one in your place. But w what about, you know, and I'm not trying to disrespect this brother. This brother is, um, I think he's a brilliant businessman. But I want to, he's in the industry, not the music industry, but the industry, uh, and the industry is extremely influential. And this brother Steve Harvey said, your kids can't eat integrity. So when you're trying to feed your kids, when you're trying to pass down generational wealth to your grandchildren, when you see the prices of food that, quality food, how much they cost, when you see how much quality education cost, what would you say to a person who has that mentality? Once again, I'm not trying to come at Steve. It's just something he said that I think we need to discuss right now. Your kids can't eat integrity, Professor Griff. Well, to my brother, Mr. Steve Harvey, to make a statement like that, that just kind of lets you know you're disconnected from everything we've talked about on this show so far. You're dis disconnected from the spirit, your spirit. You're disconnected from the soul simply because integrity is part of one of the building blocks that even made you who you are. If you didn't have integrity, you couldn't have the people that work for you that work for you. You couldn't have your children looking at you like an upright and upstanding dad. You couldn't have your wife look at you like an upstanding uh, husband, proud to be your wife. It's integrity that glues all of this together. Steve Harvey, I may not have the quote unquote financial riches that you have, 
but I could go anywhere that my name is mentioned and gone a certain level of respect. Why? Because I have integrity. That feeds my family. You understand what I'm saying? I put out a book recently, Mr. Steve Harvey, in which you could buy it if you like. Just go to my website, bro. <laughs> www.professorgriff.me or call me, Steve, 678-557-2919. I put the book out. All right. Now check this out. How deep the integrity how deep the integrity runs, Steve. I put a children's book out, ages 5 to 12. So much so that I never even put my name Professor Griff on the book. And but because people see the book and they say, "Well, wow. This is deep, man. What mind put this book together, Steve?" And they say, "Oh, you know that's Professor Griff." Oh, no wonder. I got how much does it cost? Case closed. Why? They do that, Steve, because I connect with people and people connect with me based on my history and based on integrity, man. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because they know I'm not going to take my mind and put it into a book that's going to lead their children astray or lead them on the wrong path. They trust that, Steve. And that's what integrity is, man. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's how deep, not what it is, but that's how deep integrity runs, you understand what I'm saying? Um, a lot of times when when your name is mentioned, Steve, you got to know they got you want people to say that's a man of integrity. That's a man that keeps his word. That's a straight up brother. You understand what I'm saying? We have to build what we have on integrity. So when this world falls, Steve, and them people decide to get rid of you and all the shows that you on. All right. It's the integrity that you're going to fall back on, bro. I guess what a lot of people. um see in the brother Kanye West and what he's exposing there's um two different types of racisms I guess I guess you could say there's many types but <laughs> uh you have this o this overt racism that's straight in your face you know I'm gonna let you know I don't like you you know then you got this covert racism where it's covered up where Hillary Clinton might start dancing with you she'll start using slang words that 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 everybody uses, it, it, um, Bill Clinton might play the play the saxophone. Mm. You know, there, there there's many forms of this thing we call racism now. Mm. So what Kanye is saying, something that I've I've I, I'm not hearing. I heard you talk about it, the brothers in the grassroots. But as far as multi-millionaires, I'm not hearing them expose the Democrats at the level that I'm hearing Kanye West expose the Democrats. Now, when when we, a person hear me say that, they may say, oh, Brother Rich is a Republican. You don't have to be either or. What I'm saying, I'm making an observation that I've never seen a black entertainer on his level expose Democrats the way he has. It's always the Republicans, the Republicans, George Bush is bad, um, Donald Trump is bad, the Republicans are always bad, but black entertainers, the million, they never talk about how quote unquote bad the Democrats is. What do you think this says about Kanye West and also the direction of our people in terms of our relationship with the Democrats? You 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 about to get them people in trouble, man. They in a funky quagmire. They cannot, Brother Rich, bring their political affiliation on um, to work with them. You know, in a lot of cases those contracts that they've signed already, that's prohibited. So you can't bring up your political issues to the job. So they won't mention. And then once they find out that the people that sign their paychecks and the people that sign their paychecks are Democrats, then, yes, yeah, it's, 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 it's a problem, Brother Rich. They're not going to speak up. They're not going to promote anything black. All right. They're not going to stand up for anyone black. All right. Um, they're not going to bring their political thing to the job. Um. They just came to do a job. They want to do their job and they want to get their check and they want to go home. And it almost seems like the more money they're paid and as often as they're paid, they seem like they kind of like a very, very quiet brother, Rich. They're, they're very, very mute. All right. When it comes to issues concerning our people, because, you know, the currency might stop flowing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, those people don't ever want to live like you and I live. Not to say we live, we, we, we live a life, a comfortable life that we've carved out for ourselves. But, out, you know, my thrust, um, like what's the brother name on the, um, uh, the, the black brother, uh, what's, what's the name of the show, man? Uh, he's, he, he has the, the saying, the quote, rise and grind. The, the brother from FUBU. 
that created FUBU. Damon uh, Jaw. Right, exactly. Rise and grind. When I heard him say that, it you know, it struck a chord in me. I'm like, wow, we gotta rise and grind. When we up, we're on the grind trying to make it happen. Why do we do that? We do that simply because we want to re remain and have some semblance of freedom in our lives every day. We don't want to go answer to someone, punching someone's clock in the traditional way. You understand what I'm saying? But how about punching someone's clock in the spiritual way, Brother Rich? How about you going to work and you can't say a damn thing? Andre 3000 says something very beautiful recently. He says, man, if I don't create, man, I don't feel like I'm myself. I don't feel like... I'm contributing. I don't feel like I'm just, if I don't create, man, I'm, I'm really nothing. I got to create, man, in order to feel good. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm saying to us and, and, the, and the rest of the world, we are the creators. If we stop creating, I think this world will come to a screeching halt, man. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because they are operating off of they're operating on the periphery of the things that we created years ago, man. You listen to trap music, drill, and all that. That's 90s music, man. Do you understand what I'm saying? We might hit them with some offbeat kind of 6-8 patterns from some Afro beats. Do you understand what I'm saying? And throw them totally off the dance floor. You follow what I'm saying? But I'm saying, I'm saying that to say this. That if the people of the world with money in position keep their finger on the pulse of of black people, you understand what I'm saying? What happens when we change the vibratory frequency on how we move? The world has to move. You saw that with the BET Awards. They have to keep regurgitating the same madness over and over. Why? They're keeping you under that spell and they're keeping you locked into that demonic frequency. Anything new will break that up and they have to, they have to start all over trying to understand it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I think we need to keep this in mind. So the next thing that, that, that has to happen, if it's new, they need a five-year incubation period for, it to, for them to catch up in order to, to get on board with it. You understand what I'm saying? We could, do, we could come up with a dance tomorrow. How long would it take white people to catch up to learn to dance? Do you understand what I'm saying? In order for it to steal it, to claim it, and call it, call it their own. You follow what I'm saying? So this is a very real dynamic when we talk about these particular things. You see... It may not mean anything to you when I talk about creating a dance or creating this. These are the things that move their world. <laughs> yes. You understand what I'm saying? Let me, ask, let, me, let me say something, Brother Rich. And you, you help me out. You can answer this question for me. A minute ago, 10 years ago, did you ever see a food truck? Where were we selling food at the African parade in Brooklyn? Yeah. Yeah. We were on the street with our tent, with our booth, selling food on the street. All they did was take that and put it in a truck. That's all. But we've been doing that. But then they regu they, they, uh, uh, the regulatory commissions, myself, they need to be guidelines to this. You need a, a license. You got to meet this, poli this policy. The FDA says this. Yada, yada. Whoop, de, whoop, de, whoop. Now they want to extract thousands of dollars for you, for you to sell the same food that you were selling a minute ago on the street, now in a truck. You understand? But who, where, where did the idea come from? Us. Just like the lotto and everything. Exactly. Exactly. So... That's where we are as a people in reference to this whole idea of knowing and understanding who we are. We're at the center of all this. See, we just need to recognize it. And we can't operate outside of these systems that they set up. Other people do it. You don't see Chinese people having this conversation. Japanese people, other, other people, they don't have this conversation. Why? Because they do it and they make it happen. Do you think that... The, oh, let's let's think of the names: the Conscious Brothers and Sisters, mm -hmm. the Woke Brothers and Sisters, the Pro Black Brothers and Sisters, or whatever term we want to give to the brothers and sisters who are have knowledge of self. Do you think they are too emotional to navigate and to understand how to dominate in this this society? Because they say you have to play chess, not checkers. Right. Because we're so a person can say. Because we're so emotional, we're too emotional to act to do what the other races do. We have to let somebody know, I don't like this, or I don't like this so-called cracker. I don't, you know, we're always letting everybody know what we don't like or what we're not going to do. We got to dress super pro-black, 
But the KKK, they wear police uniforms. They disguise themselves now. So do you think we're too emotional now to navigate? And the, and the, and the key to navigating this system is to uh, not tell everybody uh, what's on your mind. Or I guess maybe I guess maybe I'm saying to be the spook by, who sat by the door. Maybe I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Every every Everyone doesn't know how to do that, brother. That's a technique and a methodology in and of itself. Um but the idea of this emotion, emotion is not male or female. Emotion is emotion. Emotion is a beautiful thing. But now, directing and redirecting your emotion in order to succeed in whichever world you tend to operate in without having to do too much code switching. Go to work. You got to act one way. Present yourself a whole another way. Keeping your in uh, your integrity intact. Then when you get off work, not being too emotional at work. Mm -hmm. When the political issue come up by the water cooler, let it go. Even though I know you, you gritting your teeth at your desk, you want to say something so bad. You understand what I'm saying? But then when you come home, it's a whole different range of emotions, Brother Rich, that we got to bring to the black African household. So as far as the conscious individuals, I don't think we're too emotional. I think what we tend to do is, and uh, the brother was, was, was telling me this, we tend to clear the lane before we speak. It's almost like, like for example, if someone said, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you Professor Griff. Mm -hmm. For those of y'all that don't know Professor Griff, you got to clear the lane. Mm -hmm. The bio, mm -hmm. what he did, blah, 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 blah. In order for people to brace themselves to accept what Professor Grip is about to say. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. But now, when you're emotional, all right, and we're not most emotionally mature mm -hmm. to the point where we can take on a subject or introduce a new idea or move forward with a business idea without clearing the lane mm -hmm. tends to be a problem for us. Mm -hmm. Rather than just being quiet, connecting with the necessary business people you need to connect with and go Make it happen. I didn't introduce my book before I did it. I just did it. And never said anything to anyone until it was done. You follow, you follow what I'm saying? Now, I didn't seek approval. I didn't get the stamp of validation from anyone. I didn't go to, but not that, 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 that comes with a price. I didn't go to the big publishing companies for them to put it out now. All right? That individual that just got their book out, they know who I'm talking about. If that's the deal that you wanted to get, then you got to play by their rules. Mm -hmm. Now, if they gave Professor Griff, you know, um, a $50,000 check and they'll take over the publishing and this, that, whatever, whatever, whatever. And they'll ship books to wherever I need them shipped to. There's a price with that. Then now there's certain things I can't say, certain places I can't go, certain way I can't dress, certain shows I can't be on, Black Magic 363, because them publishing people won't allow that. Mm. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So... This whole idea of clearing the path emotionally, I think, Brother Rich, that is our way of navigating through all the pressure they put on us, having to communicate in an industry and in using a language that's not ours, Brother Rich. Mm -hmm. So we have to navigate. We have to navigate through that. Even with this interview right here, I got to find words to choose without getting extremely emotional. The thing with Kanye West made me very emotional, mm -hmm. all right, to a certain degree. But I kept my emotion in check and I said, well, wait a minute. Let me press the pause button and let me think and let me see what is the end game to this? And what is he actually trying to accomplish? Mm -hmm. All right. And I've come to the conclusion that that kind of behavior is not beneficial for me as an individual at 62 years old, nor is it beneficial to my granddaughter who's two years old. This is a this is an absolutely wonderful conversation, family. I want to give a shout out to everybody who was on the live right now. I know I just popped up on you. Uh, we got about nineteen hundred people on the live, so shout out to everybody watching. Um, I want to ask since we're talking about the industry, Professor Griff. You know, th there was this recent, uh, I guess you would say, commercial or advertisement that came out with Trina and this guy called Saucy Santana. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> I see the look on your face. 
face. The look how you talk about body language. You, you couldn't hide it. You couldn't hide the body language. See, but this is keeping my emotions intact. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So what I want to talk to you about, my brother, is um, a lot of the elders may get upset at the younger generation who chooses not to vote. And I want to be careful how I say this because even YouTube is coming down on people saying certain things about the election. So, but what I want to say is that um, there's a big movement out there that suggests that before it was me growing up, it was you have to uh, pick the lesser of two evils. Mm -hmm. And that was the ideology in the black community. There's a movement growing right now that's saying there's a power in not voting. To the point, like I said, where the platforms are coming down on people for even saying that. So to, as an elder who is very familiar with what happened in the civil rights movement and, the, and everything that we've been through as a people... What do you think about the idea that there's power? Not that we have to pick the lesser of two evils, but the idea that there's power in not voting at all, regardless of who ancestors died for the right or who answered, you know, that your ancestors died for the right. How dare you, nigga? What do you think about this idea that there's power in uh, not voting, my brother? Well, if we understand there's two two party system in America, the Democrats and Republicans, those individuals that came and presented a third party concept to us was very deep and intricate and we didn't we didn't use that as a strategy. You talk about playing chess a few seconds ago, that's a chess move. Mm -hmm. This move with Trina, no touching, no no voting, no no voting, no touching. <laughs> yes, yeah, so wow. Last election they had the strippers, remember? Yeah, yeah. The strippers yeah. Try getting us out to vote. That showed you first of all how much they think of you. You understand what I'm saying? That you have to use uh, debauchery and this degrading kind of um, um, non-spiritual language in order to communicate with your people to get them out to vote for two white people. The lesser of two evils. And then at the end of the day, what are you actually getting for degrading yourself? All right? If this is not, not the worst form of politics, I want, who came up with that idea? Let's go get some people to make a song about if you don't vote, you don't, if you don't vote, you can't touch. If you don't, what yeah. kind, that doesn't even make sense. They only do that for our race. Exactly. You don't, that's what I was about to say. You don't find other people doing that in any other country. You understand what I'm saying? So my, my, my question is, and I'm trying to keep my emotions intact because I, I, I have another word for them in person. If I happen to see any of these individuals. Um, and I'm going to be very mature and <laughs> respectful. <laughs> but why do we keep regurgitating the same thing? Who is signing that check that's causing our people to stoop so low to get our people to go and vote? Now, check this out. Do the same people that you want, you're using that tactic to get them to go and vote. Have you educated them about the voting process? Um, have you voted? Have you educated them about the platform that the person that they're supposed to be voting for is running on? Have we went over a list of items and things? If any of those things on that list suit you and benefit you and your people, so we have to start looking at these things, these things, and have a political education class and educate our people. Do you understand what I'm saying? So this whole idea of this movement as to uh, that people are galvanizing people into this movement of not voting. I say, no, let's not do that. If we're going to do that, let's play chess. At the same time, you're telling people not to vote over here. We should be developing something over here. Voting blocks. Groups of people. Lobbyists. All right. Getting in touch with those people that are already in place that can speak for us, to us, and for us. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if we're going to pull a chess move like that, you better move with the intentions of knowing the next three moves from your open enemy. That's playing chess. Okay. So, yeah, so we're about to um we're about to wrap it up. Uh uh Griff got to get back inside, but man, this has been you got the chat room on fire, man. We got over 2,000 people in here. The chat room is on fire. 
um, let the people know how can they purchase. I know you got the book. You always got stuff coming up. You got the um, the gun, the gun thing you do. So let people know how they could get in touch with you and what you have coming up. Of course, people know they can hit me up directly. It's better to text me so I can send you the flyers that I have circulating. But my phone number is six seven eight five five seven two nine one nine. But people, listen, I will be in um, Capitol Heights, Maryland, on uh, October 29th. Uh, I'm back at the uh, Everlasting Life, the vegan spot. And um, we're actually going to talk about the thing that me and uh, Soleil talked about on, on the last show we did with you, Brother Rich. Because um, this music thing, we, we're trying to do our part and to get that next generation that's coming up to change that frequency and that vibration in the music so we can stop killing one another. Um, the next day on the 30th, I'll be in Lanham, Maryland, and I'll be doing a firearms class, developing an urban tactical mindset. My phone number is 678-557-2919. And then on November 5th, I'm happy to say I'll be back in St. Louis, dear, talking to our brothers in St. Louis. And we, I'm going to be dealing with the subject of musicology, all right, breaking down the music and where it's at today. A lot of people are selling their publishing. You understand what I'm saying? Um, there's certain beasts that are bubbling up. Under now, simply because as people are selling their publishing, certain people are dying and leaving certain things for other people. And people are taking those things and revealing what's been going on behind the true things that's been going on behind the scenes. I put in my book that Black Talk, Dot talked about and other people. Puffy is one of them. I have nothing else to say about that right now. But me and Rich going to get together and I want to talk about what's going on with Mace and Puffy in a minute. But I'm going to be quiet right now. But anyway, my book is called You Are the Song that you sing. Everyone has a song in them. Your children, your grandchildren have songs in them. Let's connect them back to that song that they sing and raise them in a different vibration, a frequency of 432 hertz, which is a natural warm frequency so they can begin to be in tune with not only themselves, but the music that they listen to. All right. One last thing I want to say, and once again, since these platforms are being so... Uh, heavily monitored at this time i find it strange griff i'm talking to you um i don't know what year that was when it when it went down with you and public enemy what year was that right after 1989 about 89 so the stuff you said in 89 and you got heavily criticized for kanye west is saying the same thing exactly. he just said it yesterday in 2022 yeah. About certain individuals, I'm not. Everybody knows who we're talking about. Right. If you know the history of Public Enemy, you know what right. Griff said. You know the tweet Kanye just put out. Right. Uh, you know who we talking about. Twenty, thirty, what is that? Thirty years later, this. And I'm still suffering from it. And you're still suffering from it. Mm -hmm. This is a billionaire saying it. Right. I don't. You know how they? I don't think you. You might not have been lying. You might have been. Uh, you're not as crazy as they said you was, Griff. We got this billionaire saying the same thing. Same thing, man. But, like, everybody know who we talking about. Everybody know who the group of people we talking about. But you know what they're going to do. You know you know who's monitoring this platform. But could you just touch on that real quick, Griff? I think those things that we were so bold enough to say out in the open in interviews just like this, um, with our scholarly research we were doing at that particular time, it wasn't falling on deaf ears. Public Enemy is waking people up. Not only in the black community on the on the black hand side, but we were waking people up across the globe. And that is the thing that they did not want to happen with Public Enemy. And we have to understand that. So there's a few people that put out a few books. A couple of people put out some songs and those songs were taken off the shelf. A couple of people made some statements and they shut them people completely down. Now, here's a billionaire saying what Professor Griff said years ago. Right, exactly. And now here we are now. We're going to see how this thing unfolds. We're going to see if he gets the, um, his PR team on it to kind of reel it back in, to prop him up to, right, like Nick Cannon did, exactly. Put him on a platform where he can apologize to those people so he can, can continue to be used by the same people that he's talking about. Damn, no, my brother, thank you very much. This is this is amazing, man. Thank you, family. I know we got twenty one hundred people in here, but we gotta go, man. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. All right, Pete, make sure make sure y'all support Professor Griff. Go to his website. Call, call that number. Cash App dollar sign Professor Griff.
right? Yep. Okay, yeah. Do- Cash App, Dollar Sign, Professor Griff. We out of here, fam. We see you next time. Peace.